Every day, the city of Raleigh's population grows, which means more cars on the roads, fewer parking spots. And yeah, no street parking. It's always crowded down here. It's a challenge. That's why I don't come down so often. You have to be prepared to, to find your parking spot. Louis Aquila and his wife, Ruby, visit Raleigh from Apex pretty often. That's yep. one of my favorite spots to go there. Aquila tells me this time, they got so turned around finding parking, they ended up back on the highway. Raleigh City Council met Tuesday to try to figure out a way to fix these parking problems. One thing the city's considering is building new parking decks. It's been nearly 10 years since the city has seen a new parking deck. I learned the cost to build one would be in the millions. Another thing the city's considering is raising their parking rates. The goal is to have less people bringing their cars when they visit downtown. The city is also considering teaming up with private parking businesses. None of these ideas are set in stone, but city leaders say something needs to change, and people who live, work, and play in town agree. It's a crowded city, but it's a good city, you know what I'm saying? In Raleigh, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. Oh my gosh, a man just got hit by a car. He went in the air. Police say Ali Thomas Merritt died when a car hit him around 6.15 Tuesday evening. A rec report I obtained says the car passed another vehicle and hit Merritt. However, that rec report says Merritt crossed outside of a crosswalk in heavy traffic. On this busy road, you would need to be at the crosswalk. Natalie Martin lives near Capitol Boulevard. Enjoying a 75 degree day with her grandchildren, she made every one of them hold hands as they walked along the street says she would never consider crossing Capitol Boulevard outside of a designated crosswalk, but she says it doesn't stop other people. They cross like right in between here. I don't hardly ever see them do um, crosswalk. In the short time I sat along Capitol Boulevard, I saw person after person cross through traffic less than 24 hours after a man died doing the same thing in the exact same spot. Feet away from that fatal location is this crosswalk. I did some digging into NCDOT's records and found out between 2008 and 2015, nine people have been hit by cars in this same area. Several others were injured, all less than half a mile away from a crosswalk. In Raleigh, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. Even though people kept filing in, okay. Thank you for calling. Thanks, Thank you. phones rang off the hook, nobody actually wanted to be here. I hate daughters, yeah. <laughs> Nikisha Cooper tells me she got sick earlier in the week. I woke up this morning, I was feeling even worse. Ah. Uh, Cooper swallowed her pride. Take some deep breaths for me. Came to a room she says she hasn't been in years. That's why I finally decided to get up, come to the doctor. Across the hall, doctors and nurses ran her tests. How many positives? Waiting is always the hardest part. Finally. Hello. Hi. How are you? The results. For Dr. Ronnie Laney of Nextair Urgent Care, this is a scenario he sees a lot. Over the last two weeks, I've probably diagnosed between five and eight a day. He says those flu case numbers are not the norm. Well, this has certainly been the worst year that I've seen. Laney tells me he's seen flu cases drop in the last week. That doesn't mean we're in the clear. But we're still going to see cases come. And regardless of 70 degree February days, Laney says you can still get sick. Uh, I would still recommend that you get the flu shot. Luckily for Cooper, she escapes the flu this time. In Gardner, AJ Janivel for CBS, North Carolina. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard is one of the busiest roads in Chapel Hill, surrounded by homes, businesses, and several bus stops. The speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Not everyone follows that. It is very busy, it's dangerous. So dangerous, Sunday night, 58-year-old James Keeter died at the intersection of Critz Road after a car hit him. I asked town council member Nancy Oates what, if anything, needs to change on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Is there a problem with this road? I don't know that it's a problem so much. I think that uh, it was coincidence that the two fatalities happened so close together and on the same road. There are safety precautions already in place. Above the intersection where Keeter died is a street light. And one block down from the scene of the fatal crash, a crosswalk. Just press the button and wait, and then you cross. Yeah. Throughout the day, dozens of students cross Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard to catch the bus. Okay. 
Codano says he never had issues crossing the road, but says not everyone is like him. Several times I've seen people that have just crossed arbitrarily, just jaywalking. With safety precautions already in place, Oates tells me there's only so much the town can do. And I wish that we could pass some sort of ordinance that would keep all of our citizens safe, right. and that's just not going to happen. In Chapel Hill, AJ Janivel for CBS, North Carolina. All right. Go, man. When teachers call out, Michael Bramwell nice move. answers the call. Bramwell is a substitute teacher for Wake County Schools. Today, he's teaching gym and, ironically, health. Within the physical education department, there are three teachers out. So that, that should give you an idea. I think there's five or six total, and three are out. He says tomorrow he could be teaching something completely different. I've noticed there's been a, an increase, an uptick, if you will. In the last seven school days, Bramwell subbed six of them. Bramwell tells me when he wakes up, he checks the Wake County Public School database for substitute teacher jobs. And in the last couple weeks, there's been quite a few openings. Any given morning, you got like 19, 20 throughout the system. Um, but now you see good, massive amounts. Cary High School's principal tells me they've seen days in the last couple weeks where upwards of 10 teachers called out. It's about 8% of the entire teaching staff at Cary High School. Wake County Public School officials tell me this time of the year, they always see an increase in teachers calling out. So the question, that's it, is how does Bramwell stay healthy? A lot of orange juice, um, exercise, water. In Cary, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. Happy Valentine's Day. Love is on the minds of many NC State students this Valentine's Day. Write a note to your Valentine. But no matter the time of year, one thing always on most students' minds is game day. And I love like being in the stands with like thousands of people. However, students do not love crossing Trinity Road to get to the game. I hate it. Trinity Road is packed. Way too many people. Super dangerous. On game day, there are officers at crosswalks directing traffic. But after a few hours of having too much fun at the tailgate, students tell me some fans choose to make their own path. And then from that point, you might as well just be playing Frogger. You just kind of have to trust that you're not going to get hit. NCDOT wants to guarantee you don't get hit. They plan to do that with a $4.3 million pedestrian tunnel under Trinity Road. DOT officials say the tunnel will not only keep students safer, but help traffic flow. And students tell me they can't wait to use it when the tunnel opens this fall. I'll be the first one to go under. That'll be me. <laughs> Reporting in Raleigh, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. Walking into court, 27-year-old Ronald Frazier covered his face, trying to avoid being seen by cameras. Cary police say Frazier attempted to murder his girlfriend's four-year-old daughter. You've been charged with one count of attempted first-degree murder. Police say the child's skull is fractured and her liver is injured. Carytown officials say she's still in the hospital and Child Protective Services are involved. Frazier is facing life in prison for attempted murder charges. Warrants say the girl's mom, 27-year-old Kylie Hamilton, not only knew about the abuse, but delayed taking her child to get medical attention. Maybe you're charging one count of child abuse causing... Hamilton faces upwards of 30 years in prison for child abuse charges. Police say the suspects live together on the 100 block of Clancy Circle in Cary. If you drive by or you're walking by, everybody always waves. Aaron Kwan tells me he didn't even know the incident happened feet away from his home. I would like to think that I don't live like in the close vicinity with people uh, that are capable of doing that. <laughs> but I think that's going to happen no matter where you go. It doesn't really matter how nice the neighborhood is, right? Reporting in Wake County, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. Drones are everywhere. NCDOT already uses the technology during car crashes. Now they want to try and use them in the medical field. One of the big things we want to do with this proposal is uh, use drones to deliver life-saving medical supplies. James Pierce works with NCDOT's aviation department. He tells me drones have a lot of ways they can help save lives. One of the biggest benefits of these drones would be cutting down on travel time, especially if you're sitting in rush hour traffic 
on I-40. Even if we're just talking a 15, 20, 30 minute savings, that could save somebody's life. NCDOT plans to work with Wake Med. They will use the drones to transport blood. The problem is if you can't see your drone in the air, you're breaking the law. Obviously, if you're trying to fly across town, that's a little bit of a problem. And these aren't your little brother's drones. NCDOT plans to work with heavy duty drone companies like Zipline and Matternet to transport the blood. NCDOT is applying to a FAA proposal plan. The plan will allow these drones flying with medical supplies to continue past the line of sight. If NCDOT gets selected, Pierce says it could bring big changes to the area. In Wake County, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. The way it works right now is you're driving down the Triangle Expressway, going about 70 miles per hour, and then all of a sudden, the road just ends right here in Apex. NCDOT is looking to spend $2.2 billion to connect 540 and Apex all the way up to Nightdale. This gives an alternate route around Raleigh. One, DOT officials tell me will help relieve traffic on roads like I-40, especially during rush hour. The project is in the development stage, but not everyone in the area wants to see the Triangle Expressway expansion happen. Widespread concern about this project from across the community. Kim Hunter is an attorney with the Southern Environmental Law Center. She tells me the road will not benefit everyone in the community. If you can't afford to pay, you know, five, six, seven dollars each day to shorten your commute, you're going to be left with the exact or maybe even worse congestion than you have today. Another big concern, she says, is how this project will impact the environment. And this is going to pave over about 60,000 feet of streams. Hunter says her team is trying to spread the word to the community about this project. She says the goal is to possibly stop the expansion or get NCDOT officials to modify their plans. Reporting for CBS North Carolina, I'm AJ Janivel. In Durham County, when there's a fire or emergency, the county's fire department responds. The fire officials tell me they're concerned just how long they'll be able to answer the call. Our tax revenues to support what the fire department does would get smaller and smaller and smaller. Jim Groves grew up working with the county's fire departments. Now he's the fire marshal. He tells me as the money coming into his department dwindles, it means making hard decisions. It was pretty painfully obvious that there would be a time in the future where firefighters might have to be let go and we might have to uh, shut down stations. So the Durham County Fire Department and the Durham City Fire Department came up with a plan to merge. Now the negatives of that plan are people who live in the county could see a tax increase, but the positives are the people who live in the county and the city will see better fire services. This will keep the county from having to make significant investments in their fire department. Bo Ferguson is the deputy city manager for Durham City. He tells me every one of the 53 county firefighters will have jobs with the city's department. And even though county residents face a tax increase, this decision is most likely much cheaper in the long run than keeping the department separate. I think we both agreed that it's it's worth taking those risks because we think the benefits for our uh, residents and citizens are, are really outweigh those potential risks. In Durham, AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina. Gathered on these stairs, family, friends, and even lawmakers talked about our three winners. But while the community remembers their lives today, the parents of the victims tell me they have to live with that pain every day. Mohammed Abu Salha is the father of Yusor and Roseanne Abu Salha. The two girls and Yusor's husband, Dia Barakat, were murdered in their home three years ago. While appearing strong for the cameras, today is a very emotional day for his family. So Amira, you, you did not want to come today. I didn't, oh yeah. I did not want to come today because it's really painful. Amira Bamya, Yusor's and Roseanne's mom, tells me three years later, the pain is just as strong. With the time that goes by, how does, how does it affect you, if at all? Can I, I can forget? No, I can't forget. They are on my mind, like 24-7. Bamya says her girl's room remains untouched. She still talks to them every day. And the family has photos, undeveloped, that Rosan took. Pictures never opened, never seen from Dia and Yusar's wedding. But there is one picture 
they do look at. I saw my uh, daughter's picture uh, carrying the sign, said there is hope. Bamya says this picture makes her feel strong, and so does this community. The family tells me the reason they are here, the reason they leave the house, is so their daughter's legacy will continue on. In their honor, the Our Three Winners Foundation has created scholarships and grants for our community as well as the entire world. This building here behind me too, a youth facility, was also created in the honor of our three winners. Reporting here in Raleigh, I'm AJ Janivel for CBS North Carolina.